Welcome to Strangely Canadian. In today's video, Canada's Jack the Ripper, Dr. Thomas Neil Cream, also known as the Lambeth Poisoner. Cream was a Scottish Canadian medical doctor and serial killer who poisoned his victims with strychnine. Over the course of his career, he murdered up to 10 people in three different countries, targeting mostly lower class women, prostitutes, and pregnant women seeking abortions. He was convicted and sentenced to death and was hanged on the 15th of November, 1892. Unsubstantiated rumors claimed his last words as he was being hanged were a confession that he was Jack the Ripper even though official records state he was imprisoned in Illinois at the time of the Ripper murders. Born in Glasgow, Cream was raised outside of Quebec City after his family moved there in 1854. He attended the now defunct La Chute Academy before becoming a student at McGill University in Montreal. Graduating with an MDCM degree, in 1876. His thesis was on chloroform. His postgraduate training was at St. Thomas Hospital Medical School in London and in 1878 he obtained an additional qualifications as a physician and surgeon in Edinburgh. He then returned to North America seeking to practice in a community in need of physicians. After a brief experience in Des Moines, Iowa, he relocated to London, Ontario. In 1876, while living in Waterloo, Quebec, Cream met Flora Brooke. They began courting. Brooks became pregnant a few months later, after Cream had promised to marry her. He attempted to perform an abortion, but failed, leaving her severely ill. He tried to escape to Montreal, but was caught by Flora's father, who forced him to return and to marry her. The day after the wedding, he left for England to continue his, his medical education. The Brooks family never saw him or heard from him again. Flora Brooks almost fully recovered, but died of consumption in 1877. Cream returned to North America in 1878 and established a medical practice in London. He was charged under Ontario's Medical Act with practicing without a license and later pled guilty. However, this did not deter patients from visiting his office. In 1879, Catherine Hutchinson Gartner was found dead in a privy behind Cream's office at 204 Dundas Street. She was pregnant and had been murdered with a handkerchief soaked in chloroform. Cream had refused to help her with an abortion, instead urged her to accuse a local businessman of being the father. Cream claimed she had threatened to poison herself when he had not agreed to perform the abortion and that she had written him a letter in which she named the businessman as the father. However. Gartner's family and roommates denied that she had written it as the signature and the handwriting on the letter did not match her own, and it was dismissed as a forgery. Despite rumors and overwhelming evidence against Cream, authorities took no further action, and the case was never solved. Cream established a medical practice not far from the red light district in Chicago, offering illegal abortions to prostitutes. He was investigated in August 1880 after the death of Mary Ann Faulkner, a woman on whom he had allegedly operated, but escaped prosecution due to the lack of evidence. In December 1880, another patient, Miss Stack, died after treatment by cream and he subsequently attempted to blackmail the pharmacist who had filled this, the prescription in april 1881 a woman named alice montgomery died of strychnine poisoning 
following an abortion in a rooming house barely a block from Cream's office. The case was ruled a murder, but never solved. The location, time period, and method make Cream a likely suspect. On the 14th of July, 1881, Daniel Stout died of strychnine poisoning at his home in Boone County, Illinois, after Cream supplied him with an alleged remedy for epilepsy. The death was attributed to natural causes, but Cream wrote to the coroner blaming the pharmacists for the death, after he again attempted blackmail. This time, Cream was arrested, along with Miss Julie A. Abby Stout, who had allegedly become Cream's mistress and procured poison from Cream to do away with her husband. She turned to state's evidence to avoid jail laying the blame on Cream, which left him to, the, to face a murder conviction all on his own. He was sentenced to life imprisonment in Joliet Prison. Daniel Stout's friends erected a tombstone at his grave, which read, Daniel Stout died June 12, 1881, age 61 years, poisoned by his wife and Dr. Cream. Cream was released in July 1891. Governor Joseph W. Pfeiffer had commuted his sentence after Cream's brother pleaded for leniency and allegedly bribed the authorities, using money inherited from, the, from his father, who had died in 1887. Cream sailed for England, arriving in Liverpool on the 1st of October, 1891, about three years after the Jack the Ripper killings had been committed. He went to London and took lodging at 103 Lambert Place Road. At the time, Lambert was riddled with poverty, petty crime, and prostitution. On the 13th of October, 1891, Ellie Nellie Donsworth, a 19-year-old prostitute, received two letters from Cream and agreed to meet him. He offered her a drink from a bottle. She became severely ill that night and died from what was later found to be strychnine poisoning. During her in inquest, Cream wrote to the coroner under the pseudonym A. O'Brien, detective, offering to name the murderer in return for a 300 pound reward. He also wrote to W.F.D. Smith, owner of W.H. Smith's bookstalls, accusing him of the murder and demanding money for his silence. On the 20th of October, Cream met with a 27-year-old prostitute named Matilda Clover and offered her pills, instructing her to take four before bed. She began experiencing violent, painful spasms later that night and died two hours later. Her death was assumed to be heart failure due to alcohol withdrawal. Cream, under the name M. Malone, wrote a letter to the prominent physician, Dr. William Broadbent, claiming to have evidence of his involvement in Clover's death and demanding 25,000 pounds for his silence. Broadbent contacted Scotland Yard and they set a trap for the blackmailer when he would come to collect the money. However, no one was caught. On the 2nd of August, 1892, after a vacation in Canada, Cream returned to London, where he met Lois Henry, knee Harris, a prostitute. He offered her two pills, insisting she swallow them right away. Harvey, suspicious of him, pretended to swallow the pills he had given her, but secretly threw them from a bridge into the River Thames. On the 11th of April, Cream met two prostitutes, Alice Marsh, 21, and Emma Shrivel, 18, and spent the night with them in their flat. Then, before leaving, offered them three pills each and a can of tinned salmon. Both women died later that night from strychnine poisoning. Through his blackmail letters, Cream succeeded in drawing close attention to himself. Not only did the police quickly determine the innocence of those accused, but they noticed something telling in the accusations made by the anonymous letter writer. 
he had referred to the murderer of Matilda Clover. Clover's death had been registered under natural causes related to her drinking. The, po the police quickly realized that the false accuser who had written the letter was the serial killer, now referred to in the newspapers as the Lambeth Poisoner. Not long afterward, Cream met a policeman from New York City who was visiting London. The policeman had heard of Lambeth Poisoner and Cream gave him a brief tour of where the various victims had lived. The American happened to mention it to a British policeman who found Cream's detailed knowledge of the case suspicious. The police at Scotland Yard put Cream under surveillance and soon discovered his habit of visiting prostitutes. They also conducted an investigation in the United States and Canada and learned about their suspects history including the conviction for a murder by poisoning in 1881. At the inquest into Matilda Clover's death that was held by Athelstan Braxton Hicks in July 1892, he read out a letter signed by Jack the Ripper declaring Dr. Neil innocent, which produced laughter, including from Neil. The judge returned the verdict that Matilda Clover died from strychnine poisoning administered by Thomas Neal. On the 3rd of June, 1892, Cream was arrested for the murder of Matilda Clover, and on the 13th of July, he was formally charged with the murder of both Donworth, Marsh, and Shrivel. The attempted murder of Harvey and extortion. From the start, he insisted he was only Dr. Thomas Neal, not Thomas Neal Cream and the newspapers usually referred to him as Dr. Neal in their coverage of the proceedings. His trial lasted from the 17th to the 21st of October in 1892. After deliberation lasting only 12 minutes, the jury found him guilty of all counts and Justice Henry Hawkins sentenced him to death. Less than a month after his conviction, on the 15th of November, Cream was hanged at Newgate Prison by James Billington. As was customary with all execution, executed criminals, his body was buried the same day beneath the flagstones of the prison, along with other executed criminals marked by one initial. His body was disinterred on, in 1902 and moved to London Municip Municipal Cemetery. He is now buried in an unmarked grave in section 339. Billington claimed that Cream's last words on the scaffold were, I am Jack the. Billington promoted this alleged incident as proof that he had, that he was responsible for executing the notorious Victorian serial killer, Jack the Ripper. However, these claims are unsubstantiated as police officers and others who attended the execution made no mention of such an event. Moreover, Cream was in prison at the time of the Ripper murders in 1888, so it would have been impossible for him to be Jack the Ripper. But Ripperologist Donald Bell speculated that Cream had bribed officials and had been let out of prison before his official release. And Sir Edward Marshall Hall suspected that Cream's prison term had been served by a lookalike in his place. Such notions are extremely unlikely and contradict all known evidence given by the Illinois authorities, newspapers of the time, Cream's solicitors, Cream's family, and Cream himself. One of Cream's biographers suggested that Cream on the scaffold and about to be hanged was so frightened that he lost control of his bodily function and stammered I am ejaculating which could have been mistaken for I am Jack. English Canadian writer Chris Scott won an Arthur Ellis Award 
for best crime novel in 1989 for Jack, a novel based on the premise that Cream was Jack the Ripper. The motivation for the series of poisonings has never been settled. It has generally been assumed that Cream was a sadist who enjoyed the thought of his victims agonizing death and his control over them even if he was not physically present to witness these. However, Cream was also interested in money, as evidenced by his attempts at extortion in almost all of his crimes. So it remains a possibility that he committed the murders as part of an ill-planned attempt to profit from each one of them. From the start of the series of crimes, Cream wrote blackmail notes to prominent people and the poisoning of his one known male victim, Daniel Stout, was committed with the hope that Stout's wealthy widow would share the deceased's estate with him. In addition to the five poisonings Cream was convicted of, he is suspected in the murder of his wife, Flora Brooks, in 1877, and at least four other women who died in his care while undergoing abortion. In the first episode in 2000 of Murder Rooms, Mysteries of the Real Sherlock Holmes, the young Arthur Conan Doyle and Joseph Bell pursue a murder case that involves a Thomas Neal, played by Alec Newman. At the end, a postscript further identifies him as Thomas Neal Cream, who, attempt, who attended medical school alongside Conan Doyle. In the 2015 BBC One television series River, Cream appears frequently to and converses with D.I. John River as a manifest. Thanks for watching as I present to you the tales that are strangely Canadian.